with you this evening as we look back on Louisville's red white scrimmage and then look forward to the mighty Simmons College Falcons on this wonderful night of October 16 2023 Jake how are we doing man I'm good still a little perturbed that I didn't get to watch any of the red white scrimmage besides like the two clips that WHAS sports team posted and a few clips that Louisville's Twitter has posted but uh I guess I'll I'll get my fill of Louisville basketball here in just a couple of days. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a return to like the 80s and 90s again, isn't it? Where it's like we're going back to it almost feeling secretive in a way where it's difficult to, to get access to the program right now. The part that, that kind of irks me, they didn't really hype up the red-white scrimmage at all, but then said the red-white scrimmage was a replacement essentially of Louisville Live, even though they typically have the red-white scrimmage they're just saying we're going to put an emphasis just on red white scrimmage this year. Then don't really hype it up very much. Kind of post the li- link to the tickets a few times. Nothing serious outside of that promoting the red white scrimmage. Uh, and then announce basically the day before, day of. Yeah, you're basically not going to find this on ACC Network Extra, the CW, HLN, CSNBC. Like you're not going to find it anywhere. You're not going to be able to stream it. I'm kind of frustrated. People that were able to make it. I mean, if somebody would have pulled out their phone, they would have gained a massive following very quickly. If somebody could have just shown. I mean, I even remember back mm, probably four or five years ago, uh, a few people actually went out to the Red White Scrimmage and filmed most of it and then posted it on YouTube. Those days are gone as far as the excitement and hype. It looks like we had about 5,000 to 5,500 there on hand for the Red White Scrimmage. But what we do get is some highlights. We do get people that were there in attendance talking good, bad, ugly, everything in between. Uh, who are the players to watch out for? You know, we had a legitimate box score that Jake was nice enough to kind of thumb through and give us the important details from that box score. And probably we'll be posting it on Twitter sometime before the next game. Uh, but Jake, key takeaways from what we know about the Red White Scrimmage. I love to be a little bit more prepared, you know, actually go back, watch film, watch full games before I start to talk about things. But that's not possible because I live two hours away and Louisville basketball hates showing their fans uh, their content. So that's cool. Um, But based on the highlights that I saw and the stats, biggest takeaway is Trey White is that guy. I mean, stat line was kind of like T. Will-esque. I know it's red, white scrimmage, so it doesn't mean that much, but 17 points, nine rebounds, four assists, 45% shooting, 50% from three. I mean, kind of a do-it-all player. Last year, I know he was kind of stuck behind three, four, sometimes five dudes in that USC team. Uh, So his stats were not awful, only nine points a game, five rebounds, but not as good as they could have been. So it looks like he probably going to be the team's number one option and uh, showed a lot of versatility in his game that I didn't see last year. Nine, five, and one from Trey White last season at USC. And really, I mean, you had a really solid stable of players in that backcourt last year for USC. Trey White really going from probably a number three. I mean, he was a starter for that team, but going from basically a number three to the guy this year on this Louisville team, especially with with Trenton Flowers gone and out of the picture, uh, it, it feels like Trey White is – has every opportunity to be the leading scorer, one of the top three leading scorers on this team. Uh, as we said previously, really excited to see uh, that kind of back and forth between Trey White and Mike James. I think those those are two guys that really can uh, make things interesting for this Louisville backcourt uh, in 2023-24. 
Uh, and, and speaking of Mike James, 12 points, three rebounds, two assists, uh, and he was four for five from beyond the arc. So Mike James not really making a concerted effort to muck it up as, as we're used to. Uh, with that being said, though, uh, it's a solid showing from Mike James. Kind of, I think what fans are going to kind of come to expect this year. I think that Mike James is going to be the uh, kind of prolific three-point shooter on, on the squad. And I, I think that that's what the staff's going to try to bill him as. Like he's going to be a legitimate shooting guard this year. So look for this guy to be at times shooting eight, 10 threes per game. And if he's going to make 80%, I'd be very pleased with that. If he shoots 80%, we're winning the national championship. That's all I know. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's huge. If Mike James, he shot what, 35, 36% last year from threes. I mean, wasn't a bad shooter. But I mean, if he can become, like Ryan McMahon esque, where like you cannot leave him open and defenses have to know where he is at all times. I and mean, that changes this offense completely. Last year, we did not have a knockdown three point shooter. Mike James was as close as we got, but to me, he was more of a streaky, wide open jump shooter. So if he can become that knockdown dude, I mean, that just gives so much more space to cut to Sky Clark, Trey White, all the other ball handlers. Yeah, I would like to see Mike James become like that, just do it all, uh, versatile, you know, muck it up type of player. At the same time, though, Louisville needs three-point shooting, and I think he is the most capable on the squad. Uh, you know, you look you look down the list, Curtis Williams kind of built as a three-point shooter, two for seven from the field. Caleb Glenn made his only attempt. J.J. Trainer one for three. Sky Clark, one for five. Hersey Miller, 0 for one. Tyler Johnson, 0 for three. Brandon Holly Hatfield, one for one. Trey White, one for two. Karan Davis, one for one. So – when you look across this roster and you look at the the, the guys that are going to be taking the bulk of the threes, it feels like it's going to be Mike James. Watching Curtis Williams' highlights, it seemed like he was a guy that was ahead of the rest of uh, – most of the rest of his class at his position as far as capability beyond the arc. So that'll be something to watch for sure. Four for 13 from the field from Curtis Williams. That dude uh, looked like looked like me uh, playing in a, in, in a rec league basketball game. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see if, if he's a guy that the coaches are encouraging him to shoot. And that's something I definitely want want to see uh, in this up- upcoming exhibition against Simmons College. Yeah, I liked uh, I liked his confidence there. It's uh, it's pretty rare to see a freshman come into his very first time ever playing at the Yum Center and be willing to miss that many shots. But I mean, it's an ex- well, it's not even an exhibition game. It's a scrimmage. That's when you need to miss shots, need to get that confidence up. I mean, I watched his tape. He's he's an elite shooter. That is the skill that he brings. He can score from all three levels, mid-range pull-up, three-point pull-up, spot-up shooter. He can really do it all uh, when it comes to shooting. So, liked that he was confident. Only shot two for seven from three, but I- I'm just happy to see him not get putting his head down and uh, refusing to shoot the ball after the first few didn't go in. Other thing that stood out to me uh, was Big D. Big D. I know we're big fans of Big D around here. Might mm-hmm. be a little bit further along than we expected. Again, hard to tell because all I watched were highlights. He scored 12 points on dunks, and I don't ever think his feet left the ground. Um, but five blocks in like 28 minutes of play is absolutely insane. And if he's going to do that, then he's going to be on the floor 30-plus minutes a night, no matter how far behind his offensive game is. Very impressive. And, and the thing with Evans is – like he's still he's still got that baby deer effect, right? Like where he's still trying to look look for different ways to affect the game while learning to adjust the play with a seven foot two body where with a nine foot eight standing reach. Those kind of guys, it's not very often that you see someone with that kind of size uh, be able to to adapt quickly uh, to the college game uh, just because he's so long and so lanky. But again, if this is a guy that can keep adding some weight, uh, keep gaining some balance, get some confidence, I mean, is De- Dennis Evans, is, is he a potential starter on this team? I wouldn't expect him to start early on. I mean, I just I think we have the experience in the front court to where it's not necessary. I mean, you've got J.J. Trainer, you've got Brandon Hunley Hatfield. So I think those two are going to be the starters. But I mean, if Dennis Evans is going to be a stalwart on the defensive end when this team so badly needed, a defensive, like, lockdown guy in the paint, then I, I think by the halfway through the season it could be. I think the only thing that concerns me with him is the offensive game is pretty far behind. You're never going to throw it to him in the post and watch him hit one, two post moves and put up a nice layup or a hook shot or anything like that. 
He's also got some issues with his hands and his ability to take contact just because he's so raw. But, I mean, I think as the season goes on and as his career here at Louisville goes on, the sky is truly the limit. Yeah, the only reason I can see him starting is if you want a guy like J.J. Trainer to be a spark plug off the bench. Like, you have to have the first couple guys that come off the bench be real impact guys, guys that kind of can kind of, you know, you, you give them like the the, the left hook, right, come, coming out early. Uh, and then you're get, giving them jabs, and then you come out of the first timeout or after the first five or six minutes of the game, and you start hitting them with the right hook all of a sudden. That's what you need. That's that's the the intensity, the aspect that you need coming off the bench. I'm not sure you get that from a Dennis Evans coming off the bench. Uh, it seemed like, you know, Brandon Huntley Hatfield played better as a starter. Uh, so there's some guys that play well as starters, some guys that, guys that play well as bench players. So I would I would be interested in seeing, you know, maybe it's like J.J. Trainer and Mania Korofor are those the guys that come off the bench and they're your spark plug. Is Caleb Glenn that guy? I kind of like the aspect of Dennis Evans just just starting from from the sheer aspect of you're, you're just not going to immediately start it off and, and try to get it in the lane on, on Dennis. So I don't know. I, that's something that I'm interested in seeing in, in these exhibitions. But again, uh, and maybe that we can get into that now. Simmons College coming up, not exactly going to present the the size and skill set that a uh, Duke or North Carolina bring. Before we go any further, as you probably know, sports betting is officially live in Kentucky. Sports betting sites are offering new bettors tons of awesome bonuses to get started, and we've made it super easy and put all of our favorite promos into one list for you. Check out all of our best sportsbook promos at bit.ly, that's bit.ly slash state of Louisville, so you can maximize your first bets. Also, each time you sign up for one of our promotions, you're directly supporting our podcast. So if you're looking to sign up for the new Kentucky Sportsbooks, head over to bit.ly. Again, that's bit.ly, bit.ly slash state of Louisville for our top offers. That's bit.ly forward slash state of Louisville. Offers are only available for new customers who are 18 plus or 21 plus at select sports books and physically present in Kentucky. Please gamble responsibly. And as always, if you have a loved one who has a gambling problem, please call 1 800 Gambler. Simmons College, as you know, you and I were talking a little bit beforehand. Uh, and you know, I was saying, oh, well, I think they're NAIA or D3 or something they're like, you know, they're actually NCCAA. So they're the National Christian College Athletic Association. Um, so with, with that in mind, Simmons College, any thoughts about about what they bring to the table? Oh, as the local Simmons College Falcon expert here, I've got a lot to say. Uh, no, not not a whole lot. Did some Internet sleuthing while I was uh, at work today. Finished 13 and 13 last year, like you said, in the National Christian College Athletic Association. So by all standards, a mediocre like I'm guessing it's kind of similar based on what my friends said to like in NAIA D3 level. So a mediocre NAIA school. I know they played Midway College last year, which is like, I want to say 40 minutes away from UK. My buddy actually got a scholarship there. We played on the same high school team together and we were not a good high school team and he did not start <laughs> for us. And he got a scholarship to go play at Midway and they just yeah. lost to Midway College by 23 last season. So if that tells you anything at the level of skill that is had at Simmons College, it, it, is, it is not high at all. Uh, they did play a minor league basketball team from Indiana yesterday called the Indiana Swarm. I, I did not know that you could do that as a college program, just go play semi-professional basketball teams, but they did. Uh, they won by eight points. But I mean, if we don't beat this team by 40 plus, then I will immediately revert into the fears that we don't make it to double digit wins. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you talk about <laughs> you put here 11 out of 14 players, 6'3 or shorter, I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, you you have how many players on this team are are under 6'5 for you, for Louisville? Hersey Miller? Three? Yeah. It, it, yeah, if, the Hersey, if, if Scott Hersey, Clark, and Ty Lohr. I mean, I think Scott Clark's like 6'4, though. Uh, I, I could oh, be, he could be, then, yeah, maybe it's just two. Could be could be wrong on that end. So that, that'll be interesting to see. It's kind of like uh, – you know, when you when you used to watch high school games growing up and guys that might end up being a high level point guard or end, end up like playing a four or five at a at a small level high school team. So going to be kind of like that for Simmons College. I would expect 
for Louisville to come out the gates and just try to be feeding the post. I think that, you know, this is a great opportunity to see what you're made of in, in the low post. And I, I want to see Chris Ball movement. I want to see, you know, pressuring the ball. I want to see them finish off this team like they're supposed to and not be like last year against Shaman Odd. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I'm looking for is, I mean, obviously we talked about it, 11 other 14 players, six to three or shorter. Uh, so they're, I mean, they're like a low level Kentucky basketball team when it comes to height or maybe high level, or like low level Louisville high school basketball mm-hmm. team when it comes to height. So in my opinion, I want to watch the guard hard plagues i mean athletically talent wise they're probably not gonna be the same but at least they won't just have that dominant size where like we can just give dennis evans the ball and he can just shoot over every player that's not going to show us much when it comes to the future of this team and doesn't take much skill so i'm hoping to see tyler johnson play well sky clark play well maybe a little bit of hersey miller playing well as well i think that's the biggest thing i'm gonna have my eye on is the guard play yeah i mean i just want to see how they operate as a team a, a big thing to consider in that red white scrimmage, uh, a lot of people were saying that that they thought the defensive intensity looked looked a lot better, uh, but with that came a lot of turnovers, and that was a huge bugaboo for Louisville last year. That uh, was the turnovers. So I'd like to see them protect the ball. I'd like to see them come out and look like a a solid quality team, right? Like I, I want to see them come out and, and just absolutely drub this team, do what they're they're supposed to do, uh, get some of the you know walk ons in. Get, gain a little experience and, and see what this rotation could look like. Uh, you know, I don't know how much how much you put into this, but uh, it could be a solid indicator of where the coaching staff is looking, at least early on, in terms of who could be starting for this team. So that, that's definitely what I'm looking for. We'll come back after this game. We'll preview Kentucky Wesleyan. Kentucky Wesleyan, a little bit stronger of an opponent. We'll kind of be looking at that, that as more of a litmus test, probably, uh, in the Kentucky Wesleyan game at Simmons College. October 18th, 7 p.m., ACC Network Extra. Uh, So if you're looking to tune in, you can actually do so from afar. Uh, If you're looking for tickets, they still have some single-game tickets available as well at the KFC Yum Center. Uh, Jake, any final thoughts on on, on this game? Uh, Not a lot. I mean, like I said, if we don't win this game by 40-plus, I'm terrified. I mean, that's the level of talent that this team is facing off against on Wednesday night. Unless Simmons College just brought in some of the craziest transfers that have ever came to their program. This should be an easy, easy victory. And if it's not, then I'm going to be pretty concerned pretty early. Uh, I agree with you, though. The numbers, I want to win by a lot just to prove that our talent has gone up a level. But what I do want to see is more defensive intensity, less turning the ball over, more team chemistry on offense, a more even scoring distribution among the players, and maybe a little bit better three-point shooting. Because I think those are four things that really plagued us last year. So if we can see those early on, I'll, uh, I'll have more and more hope as the – for the rest of the season. Sky Clark, I want to see if his abilities on the quarter is good as, as his abilities with the Legos. Uh, if he can do that, <laughs> if you didn't see that on social media, he said it improves his dexterity and he could just lose hours just working on those Legos. So not something I ever got into, but it sounds like he won over a bunch of young fans by saying that he was super into Legos, Harry Potter and, and, and the like. So do you, do you buy you buy into that? It improves your dexterity by doing a bunch of Legos. I am not that dexterous, and I really have not uh, messed around with Legos too much. I built one with my five-year-old cousin like 10 years ago, and that was enough to let me know that this is not for me. So uh, maybe maybe he's on to something there. Maybe I need to get more Legos in my life, and uh, maybe I can use my final year of eligibility to uh, help the cards out next season. Jake Hook, more of a uh, more of a thousand-piece puzzle guy. From the Lego guys is what, I'm, is what I'm getting from this. So it's great to see you again, man. Great to see your wonderful face. That's all we got for you guys this week. But as soon as we have this game on Wednesday, we'll be back with more, a little bit more in-depth analysis. Simmons College, October 18th, 7 p.m. If you can be there, cheap tickets to get in. If not, ACC Network Extra. You can find Jay Cook on Twitter or X at UofL underscore updates. You can find me at Press Mind. Us at the starting five, sorry, starting 502, the starting F-I-V-E-0-2 on X slash Twitter and at the state of Lou. Until next time, starting 502 podcast, let's beat these Falcons.